Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So in today's short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these perfect little gifts as I've called them. So if you have a co-worker that has a birthday coming up or even for Christmas presents and bag fillers and that kind of thing, this is perfect. So basically what they are, they're little notebooks, hand bound. They have different types of paper inside. You can use any paper you have. So I've got graph paper in there. In this one, I've got some tea dyed paper. So, you know, whatever I had on hand, you can have a mixture of papers in there. And then there's also a little a laminated bookmark with a charm on the side here. And that slides in perfectly wherever it needs to go. I will also show you how you can package them up and add little touches to make it look extra special this one over here we are going to make together today so let's get started right so this is my box of remnants in which i throw in leftovers from previous projects so i have you know depending on the size of the journal that i was making i might have um, cutoffs like this and i keep all of it even these little pieces like this and i have a whole box full of stuff so i'm going to use this leftover today the sizes really don't matter but this is a leftover from when I was making some type of a travels notebook and you can see that I had to sort of trim up my papers there I can't remember what I was making might have been a travels notebook so the sizes don't matter you do you use what you have but just in case if you want to know the size of this folded signature is four by four and three quarters this is inches there we go so I have 10 pieces of paper folded in half and that gives me 40 pages. So one leaf is two pages, one, two. So it's a perfect little size for a notebook. I also have a folder like this where I keep all of my leftovers from uh, scrapbook papers that I use, all in different sizes, and it's all very, very well organized because I just recently organized it. So I rummaged through, and this is the paper that I chose to use for this project. The first thing I'm going to do is cut this to size. So I'm just going to get rid of this bottom part first. And this is going to be my cover because I think the inside, you know, once you open the journal, that corresponds better than this. You can't really see but this is purple doesn't really go with the orange so this is going to be my cover and the first thing i'm going to do is measure how much i need so i just want to leave a tiny little bit of space up the top and down the bottom so you can see here how i've got just a tiny little bit of space there and now i'm just going to mark where to cut there we go and now I'm just going to trim the, that top bit off and I've got some magazine pages underneath just to give me a nice clean cut. Here we go. So my height is all sorted and now I am going to do this and just to see how much width I need to trim off. So I'm doing this and I'm going to fold over here. I've got that fold there and I'm going to use it to make my perfect nice creased fold over here and I'm going to trim this part off. I'm going to keep this piece for my little bookmark. I'll pop this to the side, we'll come back to that in a moment. And so this is my cover, perfect and now let's just check that everything is good. So I have a tiny little bit of space up the top, a little bit down the bottom, and then a little bit here as well. And the next step is binding. I'm going to bind this journal. I'm going to use a three pamphlet stitch. When binding actual junk journals, I like to use my waxed thread. But for this little project, I just use embroidery floss. And I'm using this color. I had it sitting on my desk, so I'm going to use it up. So the first thing I want to do is line everything up nicely, make sure everything is in order. And then I'm going to poke three holes, one in the middle and then two on the sides. I'm not going to measure anything. I'm just going to eyeball it. Find the approximate middle over here. And then maybe down, one down here. And then approximately one about there. 
And now for my binding, I'm just going to start in the middle, go to the top hole, down to the bottom hole, Now I'm holding this tight over to this side and I'm going to go back through the middle hole. There we go. And I like to have my threads one on each side of this middle thread. So my middle thread is here and then I've got one here and one on this side as well. And now I'm just going to do a double knot. Usually I do a little bow here, but in this case, I'm just going to trim these ends right off. Now that my little notebook is bound, I just want to just work it in a little bit to make it nice and nestled in there. And now to the embellishing part. So the first thing I'm going to do to make it all look nice and uniform is I like the look of the rounded edges. So I'm just going to round all of my edges, corners I should say. Here we go. And now I just want to just ink these edges just a little bit to seal and to give it that final kind of finished edge. Now the next thing I'm going to do is decorate the front over here a little bit. So you can have a label here, you can have some type of a fussy cutout from a book. I am going to go through my little box over here that I have with all different types of journaling spots and things like that and I'll try and find something that looks really nice so let's have a look so there's a couple that I've chosen and they all kind of look really cute anything really once we you know ink the edges and that kind of thing this looks quite nice I like this one this one also looks okay but I'm actually really liking this one because of the contrast between you know the black and the and the orange and I think it really stands out and you know if it's a gift and that sort of thing I think it looks nice I like it I'm gonna go with this one so I'm just going to round these edges again just to make it all look nice and uniform see that looks much nicer and I'm also going to ink the edges to get rid of this white on the sides and my next step is simply to glue this on so I'm going to use my glue stick first to apply all over and then I'm going to use another type of glue just on the edges because I want to make sure that the edges don't lift and I also want to make sure that it stays glued. I'm not sure that I trust the glue stick so I like to apply the second glue and now I'm going to glue this on my booklet over here. Just make sure that there's no seepage of glue so that look all looks quite good now I'm going to tie this little golden ribbon around my booklet just to make it a little bit more special so I have trimmed off about 66 centimeters or about 25 inches in length and now I just want to make a little bow at the front like this And it's always hard for me to make the perfect bow so what I have been doing is I go like this and then over let's see it's not too bad it could be better but it's fine for now or I might give it another go that looks cute so I'm just going to trim this a little bit over here because I've got bit too much and that looks really really cute so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to make this little bookmark so because I'm going to laminate it I am going to trim off just a tiny tiny little bit because I want it to be able to fit in here perfectly and this does fit in perfectly but after I laminate it it's going to have that laminated part on each side so I'm just going to trim it down a tiny little bit on the side really only a tiny little bit and once again, I want to round all corners because I want everything to be uniform throughout. Ink these edges so I don't have that white edge. See how that seals it and finishes it? 
nicely. And of course now I want to decorate this a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of a book page. And then I'll find something from here. These are all fussy cut out images from books and things. So I want to find a little focal piece that's going to go on here. So let's see. This is really cute but it's too big. Something like this it's qu looks quite cute. And something like this. I don't want to overthink it so I'm going to go with this image. But I want to ink the edges so it doesn't have that white stark outlining uh, because then you can, I don't know, I guess see that it, it was fussy cut from a book. And now just this book page I'm going to, I'm just going to have it, this as a little background. Something like this, but I want to make the book page a little bit smaller and maybe have more uneven edges. I really like that. So that's what I'm going to do. And now ink these edges here to give it even more of a finished border. That looks good. And because I'm going to be laminating this, I don't need to glue this down completely. I can just apply a little bit of glue there in the middle just to hold it in place as it's going through my laminator or as I'm putting it into the laminating sheet. And I'll do the same for this guy over here tiny little bit of glue and I think that looks quite nice. If I'm laminating something and I don't need to use the whole sheet I actually will cut out the section that that I don't use so that I can use it next time so that there's no wastage and so I have this left over from the projects that I've done previously and I just uh, you know cut it out and I just did a little, tiny little stitch over here um, to keep it in place so this is what I'm going to use pop it in there and I'm going to head over to my laminating machine and I'm going to laminate this and I'll be right back. And here we go, that's been laminated. Um, you could laminate the cover as well. Uh, this was actually an afterthought after I finished making these, I thought I should have a little laminated something in there. Uh, I probably, if I was to do it all over again, I might even laminate the covers over here, but it just means more work, which I don't mind, but for now, I am only having the little bookmarks on the inside laminated. And now I'm just going to cut off this excess over here. And I think that looks so, so cute. And now for a, a little extra touch, I'm going to have a little, a little dangly there. So I just need to place a little eyelet over here. I don't have a cropper dial, but I do have this silent setter. I got this from eBay, so I'm going to use this to make a little hole and also to add an eyelet here. All right, here we go. So there's the little hole there. And I'm just going to choose an eyelet that I'm going to use. Maybe I'll go with this gold one. So I'm just going to place it there. I think that's going to look cute. Like I said, I don't want to overthink every single step. So now I'm using this other attachment uh, to close the silent. It would pro probably be easier to have a cropper dial but I don't have one and I just make do with what I have. So maybe one day I will own a cropper dial but for now I'm quite happy to use my little silent setter. Okay so here is my little box of little bits and pieces that I can add to journals and such. So now I just want to find something to put on the edge over here. You know, just a little dangly, maybe something, you know, maybe something gold would be nice. Even that I have, you know, things like this ready, little paper clips and, and stuff. So I'm going to use this. I think that's going to look cute. I also had to rummage through my little findings box to get uh, some sort of a larger jump ring because I want this to be able to move freely. So here we go. I just want to apply my charm onto the jump ring and now I'm going to loop it through here and now to close my jump ring. And here we go. That looks really cute. I'm quite happy with that. And now that just can go in here. I really, really like it. And now if you have some cellophane bags, I got 50 for $3 and I just happen to have this size, which is perfect for what I'm making over here. 
it just makes it such a beautiful little gift. So let's pop it in a bag and see how it looks. Make our little bow sit nicely in there, something like that. Then if you have some sort of a pen, a nice little pen or maybe something like that, close it up, glue it down. And there we go, a perfect little gift, a little present, a little Christmas. I think this is such a great idea for a Christmas present. Let me just, I don't like the way this is sitting. Here we go, that's better. I think they look so, so, so cute. And people appreciate handmade things. And especially with a little pen in there, I think it's beautiful. So these are all of the ones that I've made. So just in case you want to see and get some ideas, I'll show you all of the bookmarks. They all pretty much have the same theme running through because these are all cutouts from exact same book. So just a little bit of a book page, the image, and then a little dangly on the side here. Something to sort of correspond with the journal. I didn't package all of them up because I only have two of these pens. And really the, the major expense in this project are the pens. And these pens cost me $3 from Kmart. So really it's such an inexpensive, beautiful little gift that you can give to someone. And you're essentially giving them your time, your love and I think people really appreciate handmade things and you know when they see a, a booklet that's been hand bound it's so special so I hope you like this video thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye